Do you like the idea of a creamy stuffed French toast that's pretty easy to bring together? If so, stay tuned because that's what you're going to get. Hello and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Roy. I'm a home cook, amateur baker, and I want to share some of my recipes with you that have helped me on my weight loss journey. These are low bite, low point recipes. If you're following WW, I am on iTrack Bites Better Balance Plan, which translates into the WW Blue Plan. And if you follow me on Instagram or are part of my Facebook group, you might already know that this, this is what the recipe was going to be for this week. However, there was a technical difficulty and I did not get any audio. So this will be next week's video. These blueberry cream cheese crumb bars. So look forward to those. But for today, we are still going to use the cream cheese that we made from my first video. And here I have it dated um, with the date of the Greek yogurt, May 12th. So we're going to use up some of that cream cheese that we made in the first video. And we're going to make some cream cheese stuffed French toast. And you want the bread dried out a bit. You usually would leave it out overnight, or if that's what I do, because the bread, especially low bite, low point breads, can sometimes be a little off from normal bread. So you could soak it and it falls apart. So I like to leave it out overnight just so that it'll lose some of its moisture and um, it'll be easier to work with. So I forgot to leave my bread out last night to dry. So I'm going to put it in the toaster oven and just dry it out a little bit so it'll absorb more of that egg custard. So we'll let that toast and I will be back. First thing we're going to do is make the stuffing because um, it's cream cheese stuffed. So we have to do the cream cheese. Now what I'm going to do is use six ounces, which is three tablespoons of the cream cheese. I'm going to weigh it out just because it's easier. So I had the bowl already set on here, changed this to ounces. Um, so that way it would come up as zero and I could just measure it without having to tear it out. But you can see how thick and creamy that cream cheese that we made was. So now to the cream cheese, we're going to add three tablespoons of confectioner sugar replacement. I use Swerve, that's my favorite. Um, I don't know what other powdered sugar replacements there are, but that's the one I prefer. And if you have another one, it should be a one-to-one -one with sugar replacement. If it's different, you'll have to figure out what the actual size should be of what you're using. And then we have a teaspoon and a half of vanilla. going to mix that up. All right, so I've toasted up the bread slightly and it's not, it's still got some give to it. It's not dry um, because if it's too dry, it could also fall apart in the mixture. So you don't want that. 
Okay, so what you're going to do is divide this into three servings. You're only going to cover half of the bread because the other half is going to be sandwiched on there. And it doesn't have to be precise, but as close as you can get so they're all evenly stuffed. And we're going to just spread it out like peanut butter or jelly or anything else. Now, <clears throat> speaking of peanut butter and jelly, in place of the confectioner sugar or in place of some of it, you don't want to get rid of all of it. You could use um, some PB2, PB Fit um, powdered peanut butter in place of some of that confectioner sugar if you wanted to do a peanut butter filling. You could also do, instead of the confectioner sugar at all, you could also do some uh, sugar-free jelly and spread that through here. You can also chop up some fruit, some strawberries. Just know that if it's a fruit like strawberries, it's going to be very liquid you might want to dry it off a little bit before you put it in to the mixture because um, the strawberries could seep some liquid into the cream cheese and make it a little too uh, soft so you may want to dry those off before you put them into the cream cheese okay so then you just put the other piece on here so you have three sandwiches. Now this is a serving for two. And what I'm going to do is cut each of these in half so each person gets three halves of the mixture. If you wanted, you could just do one each. Um, and that would obviously lower the points. Now the only bites or points that come from this is from the bread so depending on the bread that you use that will affect whatever the points of this recipe are because there's no points or bites in the cream cheese or in the egg mixture that you're going to be putting them in now this is the bread that i use i like the sara lee delightful 45 these are one bite per slice um, two bites for two slices but if you go up to three which we're basically doing by splitting this into a two person breakfast uh, then it's going to be four bites so this whole meal is going to be four bites not including the bacon that i'll be adding later okay now for the egg mixture you're going to want two eggs you have a quarter cup of almond milk here a little bit of salt you just want a pinch of salt to counteract that sweetness i'm going to add a dash more vanilla you don't have to it's not in the recipe but just to enhance that vanilla flavor i'm going to add some more you could also use other extracts if you wanted to try something different but that's totally up to you i'm also going to add three quarters of a teaspoon of cinnamon and then one teaspoon of a sugar alternative minus swerve as you probably already know. So we're going to get, you want a shallow bowl that will fit the bread perfectly. You don't want to get it into something too small or something too big because then the egg mixture won't be able to get access to all of the bread if it's too wide of a bowl. All right, so I've got the eggs. There's the almond milk. Just a pinch of salt. Just a splash of vanilla. Not, you don't need much because there's quite a bit in the stuffing itself. And then the sugar sweetener. 
and the cinnamon. And then you're just going to whisk it up just like you normally would for making French toast. Now you notice that I have the bread sitting on a wire rack inside of a sheet pan. And that's because instead of just dipping it and putting it directly onto the griddle or onto a pan, um, this will allow some of the, this custard to soak into the bread a little bit more and give it a, a better texture. Because if you put it directly onto the pan, I mean, it'll cook fine, but you won't get as custardy of a feel, I don't think, as you would normally. Okay, so that looks good. So I'm just gonna And I, I usually press it down a little bit just so that it's soaking up some of that egg mixture. Kind of like a sponge where you squeeze it to get a little more absorption in there. Now the last one is always the toughest because you've now got very little egg, so I will swirl that around a little bit and then flip it over. And what I'll do with the rest is just, especially on the last one I did, add some more of the egg custard on there. Okay, so I'm just going to let these soak up some of that egg mixture while I get the griddle heating. Okay, so the griddle is heated up. I heated it to 350 degrees. If you're using a pan, you want it over like a medium high, but you also know your stove better. Some run hotter, some run cooler, but about a medium high heat is what you need. Just going to spray this with a little cooking spray. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my spatula to lift these up because they can sometimes get a little sizzly. Um, they can sometimes fall apart if, depending on the bread that you're using and how much they soaked in. So you just want to be careful and just use the spatula and I'll get rid of this. So on this first side, you're going to want to let it go for about three minutes. Then once you flip them, you're going to want it to go for about another two minutes. But you know your stovetop, your griddle better than I do. They're all a little different. So if you think yours is going to cook a little faster, either turn down the heat or just check them before the three minutes is up. Okay, so let's flip and see. Got some nice brown color on there. And one thing you do have to be careful of when you're flipping is the cream cheese has softened up a bit more um, because of the heat of the griddle. So when you're flipping it, you just want to make sure you're not flipping it too crazily or the top could slide. Then you just have to adjust. So now we'll let this go for another two minutes. And then we all will be ready to cut them and serve them. And we're done. So I'm going to transfer this to a cutting board. Because we need to cut these into triangles to get our two servings. Okay, so you may want to let these sit for just a minute or so because, like I said before about flipping, the cream cheese is still a little soft from being heated up. And if you cut them too soon, some of it could leak out. Um, but these have been sitting for about a minute, so you don't have to wait long. And just cut them into triangles.
Okay, and then we're going to plate them up. Okay, so there you have it. There's your cream cheese stuffed French toast. Now you can use anything on it that you want. I tend to prefer this Vermont sugar-free. This is not sponsored. This just happens to be the lowest bite point uh, syrup that I found. There could be others that are about the same, but this is the one I like to use. Okay, for these three triangles of cream cheese stuffed French toast, using the bread that I use, this is gonna be four bites. If you're following calories, it's gonna be 246 calories. And if you're doing macros, it's fat, 6.3 grams, carbs, 46.3 grams, and protein, 18.9 grams. So now I'm just gonna to have to cook up some bacon and serve this for breakfast. So I hope you've enjoyed this recipe. This is one of the uses that you can get from that cream cheese that we made in the first video. And there'll be another one, as I said, next week, a dessert, so that you can have other things that you can play around with that cream cheese. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I hope you'd give it a like, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, and hit the notification bell so that you're updated whenever I do upload a new video. And I'm planning on doing some shorter videos, just focusing on quick snacks that you can make that are bite or point friendly. So if that interests you, leave a comment down below and tell me that that's something you'd like to see. And also comment if there are any foods that you want to have lightened up that I could try to play around with and maybe make an episode four. Just remember, no seafood. If it lives in the water, it should stay there. Now links to my Facebook group, my Instagram, any videos, any channels that I think you might enjoy, they're all down below in the description box, so check those out. And until next time, enjoy.